Welcome back to another episode of the Healing With It podcast. I'm your host, Kirsten, and today's episode is going to be surrounding New Year's resolutions, why I don't love New Year's resolutions, and how you can set more realistic expectations for yourself in the new year. And if you're listening to this around the holidays, I hope that you have enjoyed your holiday season, whatever you celebrate. I hope you've had lots of downtime, lots of time to relax and spend time with the people you love the most, doing the things you love the most, because that's really what the season is about. And if you've been struggling this time of year, I am sending you all the love and support. And I hope that you can find your community and make sure you reach out to people that you trust and who are there to support you. You are not alone, even when it feels like you really are. Being open and talking to someone can make such a huge difference. And I know this time of year can be very difficult for a lot of people. So just remember to take care of yourself in all the ways that you can. But before we get into this episode, you know we have to do the mindful moment of the week. For me, my mindful moment right now is finding balance in this season. Since it is the holidays as I'm recording this, things have just gotten so busy. I am in the midst of wedding planning and finding a venue for my wedding, which is very chaotic and can take up a lot of time. And I also am in the midst of studying for exams and it's the holidays. And so there are a lot of things that people want to do and a lot of people that I'd like to spend time with and take advantage of this time that we have together during the holidays. And so it it can be a very difficult time, but I feel like I have been just leaning into accepting that it's okay to spend more time doing activities that I love, like baking cookies with my family and getting together with my girlfriends and just watching Christmas movies and having a good time. I think these are all such important things that make me feel more connected to other people and Time is just so precious, so I think it's so important to really just take this time to enjoy it with the people I love the most, and that's what I've been doing. Sometimes I do find it's difficult, and I definitely let it get to me sometimes, but I am trying my best to just navigate this balance, knowing that I am doing enough regardless if I am spending three hours studying or eight hours studying. It's okay that this time of year I will not be studying as much as I will be probably in January and February. So that is my mindful moment. But without further ado, let's get into today's episode. I made an episode about this topic two years ago now when I first started my podcast, which is absolutely insane that I have been doing this for two years now, obviously very on and off, but it is such a passion for me and I'm so grateful that I've been able to keep up with it regardless of being in the midst of naturopathic medical school and right now studying for exams. I just love doing this and helping people and I have been seeing and hearing your lovely, beautiful messages and stories to me and that means so, so much. But I got a little sidetracked there and today we are really focusing on New Year's resolutions and why I don't love them and why I think there are so many other ways that we can create goals that set us up for success rather than setting goals in the heat of the moment of New Year's and clearly not following through with them, which there is a huge percentage of New Year's resolutions that just aren't successful because they are just not realistic. We often set ourselves up for failure when we have these big expectations for ourselves that we are just going to be a completely different person from one day to the other. And that is just so unrealistic. And most of the time people just end up losing confidence within themselves and feeling like there's no point. And I have been there so many times. I felt disappointed in myself. And there is so much truth when people say that confidence is built from actually doing the things that you say you're going to do. And when we don't follow through with the goals that we set or the things we say we're going to do, then we really do lose confidence within ourselves because if we can't trust ourselves, then who can we trust? And so while I do think that having the inspiration of community and everyone setting goals together and wanting to make changes in their day-to-day life is amazing, and I do think it can work for some people, I do think that there are better ways to go about it. And if you take a moment to like sit back and think about the amount of times you've created goals and resolutions around the New Year's, I want you to really think about it and really think about the outcome of those. If you're being honest with yourself, how many times have you created a goal, set a goal, and 
not followed through with it. You know, maybe you stuck with it for a month or two, but then you fell right off. This happens to so many of us because again, we are creating these unrealistic expectations for ourselves. We are only human and we cannot make these drastic changes in a day. This is something that when I was seeing patients in clinic, it was so common for people to want to make these crazy changes. And when I would tell them that I didn't want to jump into too many changes and they would come out of the first appointment with maybe one thing or two things to work on, sometimes I think they felt disappointed. And I get that because when we are ready for change, I think we feel it. When we're in the moment, I think we just want to get there, but we don't realize how unsustainable this really can be. When it comes to New Year's resolutions, it often creates this all or nothing mentality. And when we don't meet our goals perfectly or at all, then people often feel like they fail and abandon their efforts altogether. And this is a lot of black or white thinking, and it can be very discouraging. Rather than creating a mindset around being okay with failing, being okay with not sticking to our goals fully, but being able to get back into them. I think a lot of the times, for example, someone will set a goal around exercise and they will go from exercising not at all to four or five days a week. And, you know, they start out really hot going to the gym for five days a week. And soon this falls off because you feel sore all the time. You're tired all the time because your body isn't used to this and you're just not enjoying yourself and you go back into your regular habits sooner than later. Rather than setting a goal of going from no working out or no exercise at all to working out one to two days a week for 10 to 15 minutes and slowly working your way up and then being okay if you miss a day or miss a week and knowing that you can get back into it and instilling that confidence within yourself by listening to yourself, doing what you say you're going to do. This in itself is just so much more important than going to the gym four to five days a week and putting yourself through all this misery. Because a huge thing too with exercise, if we're talking about that as a goal, is the enjoyment behind it. And while sometimes it can take a little bit to enjoy it and some days you will not enjoy the process, it is important to find a form of exercise that you enjoy the most. And finding a balance, because I think it's important to mix and match the type of exercise and physical activity that you're doing. So I think it's good to be okay with maybe one day you want to go to the gym and lift weights. And another day you want to stay at home and do Pilates. Maybe you want to do weights at home. Maybe you want to just do yoga. Whatever it is, I think it's important to find that perfect balance. And that is going to take a lot of time and experimentation. It's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to see crazy changes within a couple of months. Maybe physically you will see some changes within those first couple of months, but then you might plateau because again, it's not sustainable. You're not working with your body in a way that is creating success. And that is where we run into these problems. There's also going to be external pressures with New Year's resolutions. There can be a lot of pressure of having to do it and coming up with something out of the blue. So maybe it's like three days before the new year, around this time of year when this podcast is out and you think, hmm, I should probably make a New Year's resolution. Or maybe you're at a holiday party and everyone is talking about their new year's resolutions what they're going to do all of these huge commitments that they're making to themselves and you feel obligated to do the same because oh my gosh these people are just so amazing they are going to change their life and do all these amazing things when in reality you're not going to see what that looks like they might stick to it for a month they might stick with it for another couple of months they might do it for a week talking is one thing but to actually commit to yourself and do something is the most important you might feel the societal expectations peer pressure uh, setting goals based on those external pressures rather than personal desires, this is going to lead to unfulfilling resolutions. And that's a huge thing that I believe in is making sure that you are very intentional about the goals that you create. Another issue that you're going to run into with New Year's resolutions is often a lack of planning. Because these resolutions often come without a clear plan or strategy, it's just kind of like, okay, I am going to eat healthier this year. And that's a very broad goal. And when you don't have a plan, when you don't go in with a plan, you're often not going to be successful because going grocery shopping is going to be very overwhelming and deciding what meals to eat is going to be overwhelming. And then maybe you're eating foods that you don't like and you fall out of love with the process because you're not doing the things that make you feel good, but also that you enjoy because health does not have to be miserable. There are going to be times where you have to lean into the commitment to yourself rather than the motivation but overall, you should be enjoying having and living a healthy lifestyle. And self-growth, self-improvement is something that shouldn't be done just one time of the year. This is something we should be working on at all times, and that has to be sustainable. It's not confined to the beginning of the year. This is something you should be doing January through December, whether it is exercise, diet, journaling, meditation, whatever it might be. I think it's important to recognize that these things 
need to be done throughout the year to really make a difference. It's not always going to be the most glamorous process. You're not always going to be committed to yourself, but it's about coming back into the process when you fall out of it and being kind to yourself when you do. And another big thing that I do not like about New Year's resolutions is it often focuses on the outcome rather than the process. Life is a journey, as we all know. And if we are just so driven towards one specific goal, like losing weight, then we are not enjoying the process in between. We are not leaning into the small moments in life. We are so focused on the next thing, the next day, whatever. You are never going to be happy. And let me tell you, when you get to that goal, you are still not going to be happy. You're going to get there and feel so unfulfilled and then you're just not going to stick with it. This is when a lot of people rebound and go back to exactly where they were before. And then you lose that self-confidence and you have a hard time getting yourself back into it. So make sure to create goals that you really love the process of. Again, when it comes to the exercise, finding exercise that you truly enjoy. And in the process, you might gain muscle. You might lose weight. Whatever the goal is, is going to happen, but you're going to be enjoying what you do. You might not even notice that you reached your goal because you're just having such a good time and enjoying the process that it is not all about that end goal. And then the main thing that ties into a lot of this is when we don't reach those goals or if we don't reach those goals, because there are people who create New Year's resolutions and are successful and see that change. And that's amazing. But there are a lot of people who don't. That's normal. Because again, it's these unsustainable changes that are not intentional. And then you're left with struggling to meet that resolution. And you may be left with that negative impact on your self-esteem. You might feel like a failure. There might be a cycle of self-criticism and a lot of demotivation. All of this is so important to think about when you're creating these goals. And that is why I don't really love the trend of New Year's resolutions. And you might completely disagree with me and that's okay. I get it. Some people love it. Some people are very successful with it. And if that's exactly what you need, all the power to you. I think that's amazing. But you need to realize and recognize who you are and how you work. What the type of personality you have, the type of goals that work for you. What are things that you have created that are really successful in your life? And how have you gotten there? You know, those are the things that we really have to focus on. So of course, now we've got to talk about how the heck do I even achieve the process of setting realistic goals and how can I do that? Well, the first step is really taking a step back and saying, is now the right time for me? There really is not a right time when it comes to creating and setting goals because we will always probably find an excuse. So that's where I do like New Year's because this is a time that we can really lean into the whole now feels like a good time. Everyone's doing it. There's a community behind me. But again, it comes back to that intention. So if you think you're just jumping into something, maybe wait a month. And that might sound counterproductive to the type of things that I preach to just naturopathic medicine in general or holistic health. But I do think you have to recognize when it will benefit you and when it won't. And hopefully this is making sense. I feel like it's making sense to me right now, but I'm hoping that it's making sense to you guys as well. (laughs) But I do think it is important to really recognize that within yourself. Don't feel like you just have to set unintentional, random goals this New Year's In a couple of days, if you haven't been intentional about it, if you haven't really thought about it, if you haven't created a plan, is two days from now the right time? Or could you wait two weeks when maybe all the magic behind New Year's and the resolutions behind it kind of fade away? Is this a better time for you? That's what I want you to ask yourself. I want you to really, really be intentional. That word is going to be so overused in today's episode, but I just think intentionality behind all of this is so, so important because when you have a purpose, when you have a why, when you have intention, even on the days when it's hard, even on the days when you don't want to follow through with your goals, you will have that why and you will be able to lean on it and say, okay, I do not feel like getting up this morning and working out before I go to work or before I'm with my kids. But if you follow through, it's going to get easier and easier and you're going to gain that confidence. So it's leaning into that purpose and that intention and your why that's going to keep you going. So rather than I want to lose weight, try looking at it as I want to feel good in my body. I want to take care of myself so that I can live a healthy and happy life for a long time so that I can be here longer for my kids, for my family, so I can enjoy things like traveling when I'm 60, 70, rather than being bed bound at that time or having to have all these surgeries because of all your health concerns, having to take all these medications because of all these health concerns that have come up because you didn't take care of yourself now. 
That is so important in my mind. People are so focused on, well, I don't see any problems with me right now, other than maybe the physical aspect of weight when it comes to wanting to lose weight, if that's your goal. But goals have to have intention, and that usually comes down to the long-term goal. Well, yes, losing weight is a part of that process, or maybe a part of that process, or gaining more muscle might be more a part of that process. It is not what you should be leaning into. It should be about looking into why you want to live this healthy lifestyle. What is losing weight? What is gaining muscle? What is getting more steps in your day? What is that going to do for you? That is where it's really important. And that's why I keep saying and repeating the intention part. And when it comes to setting those goals or creating those resolutions, whatever time of the year it might be, you have to look at what's the long-term goal and what are the smaller, shorter-term goals that I need to do in that process. And that's where this planning comes in. So it's sitting with yourself saying, okay, in two months from now, I want to be getting 10,000 steps every single day or three to five days out of the week when I can. What are those smaller intentional goals that I can do day to day that are going to get me there? And something that you can do is going for a walk every single day, incorporating that into your day-to-day routine, especially in the winter months when it gets darker sooner and it's cold, depending on where you live, you can decide to go for a walk when you get out of work or walk to work if it's close enough, depending on where you live, biking to work, whatever it might be, incorporating it into your day-to-day routine. Or if you have a phone call scheduled with a friend, or if you have a meeting scheduled with someone, can you make it a walking meeting? Ask them, would you like to grab a coffee and go for a walk and talk about this? Or if it's a phone call, I'm just going to go on a walk, put my AirPods in, put my headphones in, and I am going to talk to you while I'm walking. For some people, it's getting a standing desk and a walking treadmill. If that's accessible to you or available to you, that's an amazing way if you are someone who works in an office, works from home, is often sitting throughout the day, and that is a way you can get steps in. These are ways you're going to do that. And then your midterm goal of getting more steps is coming into play, but then over time, you are helping your metabolic health, you are improving your mental health, you are getting stronger, you are increasing your bone density so that you reduce your risk of osteoporosis when you get older. These are all things to think about when creating your goals and how you're going to do it. Again, it comes down to a lot of planning. If it's diet, you're going to look at How can I incorporate more healthy foods into the diet that I'm already consuming? Because let's be honest, completely changing the diet that you have is usually not sustainable or realistic. And everyone's human. You're going to probably have McDonald's from time to time. You're probably going to be in a situation where you can't bring food and you have to buy fast food. This happens, but it's reducing the amount of times that we're doing this and our mindset when it does happen. Instead of saying, I did it once, so I guess that's it. Let's just call it quits and not continue on with my diet because I had a horrible week. I went away on vacation and I just didn't eat healthy. I drank a lot and now I don't deserve to continue to nourish my body or I just shouldn't even bother because I've some how in one week reduced all of my progress that I've made over the last two months. Mindsets like this is what's going to disrupt and destroy your progress and your health. But when you are able to have the mindset and the conscious awareness of those subconscious thought processes that come with these habits, you are going to see a lot more change. So back to the diet part, If you are looking at changing your diet, again, let's see what we can put into your already current diet. What are some healthier habits we can add to your daily routine? What are some healthy swaps? You're going to slowly start swapping things rather than just completely changing your diet. You are not going to enjoy yourself and you're probably not going to stick with it long enough to see how good it makes you feel to eat that way. It's all about these very small, minimal changes that probably seem like almost nothing. And that's kind of the point because it's such a minimal change that it doesn't disrupt your day-to-day life too much. And you slowly make these changes until you look back six months, a year from now and say, oh my goodness, look how much my life has changed. Look how much my diet has changed. And it's actually been kind of enjoyable. I've gotten to experiment with it. I've gotten to spend more time with my family cooking and deciding the type of things that we like and promoting a healthy lifestyle. Or me and my friends meet up and do some meal prep every week together and that's how we spend our time. It's so fun. There are so many ways that you can make it more of a positive experience rather than punishing yourself, which is often what happens when it comes to New Year's resolutions. The amount of people I talk to who are so hard on themselves. And I think a lot of people and most of us are at times, but there are so many people who live their life feeling so bad about themselves, punishing themselves and making life so unenjoyable rather than making their life sustainable, healthy and enjoyable all in one. And that's like literally the most important thing. 
I can't stress it enough. I have honestly been there myself in certain situations. There's been times where I've had to do or chosen to do diets like the candida diet, which is a very restrictive diet. And while it would probably be looked at as a super healthy diet, and it probably did make me lose a little bit of weight, made me feel definitely better, it wasn't sustainable. For me, it wasn't sustainable to eliminate all of the sugar, alcohol, gluten, just staying away from it completely. That is just not possible, especially in the world we live in, especially during the holidays, during celebrations. It's not possible or easy for a lot of people, and that's okay. Again, it comes down to living as healthy as possible as much as we can and being okay with indulging and just enjoying foods and maybe quote unquote more unhealthy lifestyle every so often. Like that's okay. It is okay. You are human and you are allowed to do those things. You are allowed to make mistakes. You are allowed to enjoy yourself in different ways and indulge. That is what life is about, but it's about finding that balance. Kind of like my mindful moment of the week, finding balance where we can and being okay with slip ups, being okay with changes, really being so kind and mindful with ourselves. Another word I've been bringing up a lot in this episode is community. Community is so important as well because it is something that we as humans crave. It is something that we as humans need. And it's important that we have that in some way, shape or form. People will find community in work, at home, with family, with friends, Some people might do something like a knitting group, a book club. These are all forms of community. So bringing community into our goals, into our lifestyle changes can be a fun way to make changes, but to also have someone by our side, someone to lean on when it's hard, someone to talk about our struggles with, to celebrate our wins with, and someone to reminisce about you know, where you were a year ago, where you were two years ago, where you were three months ago, and to really recognize the small changes, sustainable changes that you have made in this time. So if you can find somebody, a community of sorts, whether it's online, whether it's in person, whether it's with a friend or someone new you've met, maybe it's going to one of these groups, like a running group or a walking group by yourself and meeting somebody new who has very similar goals or who enjoys something similar to you that you can create a bond over. How can you bring this into your goals and how can you make your resolutions and goals more sustainable that way while also bringing community, which is going to make you feel more connected to yourself, more connected to others, more connected to the community in general. There are all ways to do this. And usually every city or nearby city has a Facebook group where you can find those kind of communities. Or if you have friends who do things that you enjoy, maybe you can start that community yourselves. There are so, so many ways that you can bring this into your everyday life but I encourage you to find someone to do this with, make it fun if possible, but also know that everyone's journey is individual and yours probably won't look the same as your friends or your family members or somebody in like a running group, walking group, whatever it might be. But knowing that you guys have similar goals and similar interests and bringing that in and making it fun is also a way that you're going to enjoy it because you're probably going to look forward to it more than just doing it on your own. And the last thing I want to talk about in this episode is making sure that you celebrate your progress, regardless of how big, how small, it is so important to celebrate your wins. Celebrate doing the damn thing rather than just the outcome. If your goal is just to lose weight, if it's to eat healthier, if it's to make more friends, whatever it is, you might have a harder time celebrating those goals. But having intention behind your goals, finding the little things to enjoy and appreciate Regardless of that outcome, regardless if you lost the weight that you wanted to, regardless if you changed your diet the way you wanted to, it doesn't matter. It's about really celebrating the fact that you tried your best and you're going to continue to try. There have been multiple times where I have attempted exams and I have failed, but I still celebrated the fact that I did it. Regardless of how difficult it was to fail the exam, I was also so grateful and thankful for myself for pushing myself to do that. And it helped me instill confidence within myself. And for that, I'm grateful. So make sure you're always, always, always celebrating your wins, your losses, whatever it is, because even failures mean that you tried. And that is just so, so important. I cannot stress that enough. Celebrate your failures because failing again means that you did the thing. You did something scary that not everybody would do, that you didn't think you could do at one point. And you just went for it. It was hard. It was scary. It was intimidating and you still did it. And you can try again. There is so many opportunity just because you fail once, just because something didn't work out, doesn't mean you can't try again. Doesn't mean there aren't other opportunities. 
there is always something to work towards and some way that you can change your goal or reformat or reassess what you need to do in order to make yourself more successful, quote unquote, because success really looks different for everyone. And I think we put too much pressure on what that success is. I think we need to appreciate that little tiny steps, even literally if you get 500 more steps in a day, that is such a win. And if you don't make it, that's okay. You tried and you're going to continue to try. It's really just being kind to yourself and making the process enjoyable. That is so important. Health should be enjoyable. Health should be intentional. Health should be about community. There are so many beautiful things when it comes to looking at health this way. So hopefully this episode was helpful. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it made you question New Year's resolutions. It helped you maybe create a new goal, helped you think about or reassess maybe what you were thinking for your New Year's resolution if you had one or thinking about them in general. These kind of episodes are a lot of fun for me because I find that I am just so passionate about helping people with their health in ways that are sustainable and not too extreme and knowing that we have to be kind to ourselves in the process of it. So if you enjoyed this episode, please, please, please subscribe to this podcast. It helps me so much. Give us a review. That is also incredibly helpful. And when I do get a review, it makes me jump for joy. It makes my heart so happy hearing what you guys think about this podcast because it can be really easy to feel like you're talking to no one when I'm talking to a microphone, when I'm spending hours editing these episodes. Sometimes it's discouraging. So it's good to know that this podcast is helping people. And I'm so grateful for this community, for everyone who listens, to everyone who has taken the time to give it a listen, to give it a five-star rating, to give their opinion about the podcast. It all means so much to me, and I am so grateful for you guys. Hopefully you have a lovely rest of the holiday season if this is the time of year you're listening. If not, I hope you have a lovely day, a lovely rest of your week, and I will talk to you guys in the next episode.